Hey guys, it's Smudge here, and as you can now tell, we are in the Measuresmith BF109K4. Now, I'm really excited to be bringing you this aircraft today. I am absolutely loving learning how to fly this beast. Um, <laughs> when I first started learning this, or, or my first uh, couple of attempts at, uh, you know, taxing and taking off, I thought, you know something? This thing's an absolute pig, and I'm really not going to enjoy it. Um, but actually, after spending a, a couple of hours kind of getting used to this aircraft and how it performs and its little nuances, I guess you could say, um, I'm really, really starting to enjoy it. Now, if we just have a look at the externals here. Um, as you can see, this is the um, Measuresmith BF-109 uh, K4. Along with the Spitfire and Hurricane, it's probably one of the most iconic aircraft of World War II. Um, now, the K-4 is quite a late series model. It saw service uh, near the end of the war. And um, in the, the Measuresmith line, this was one of the fastest uh, of all of the, the Measuresmith variants that were made. Um, and, you know, it, it's got some advancements on it, um, which kind of stood it out from the, the G series and the E series before it. Um, mostly being more streamlined, uh, like recessed uh, radiator ducts there on the wing. Um, more kind of uh, thinner wings, I, I believe it had, and also it had that, um, as it was dubbed, the gallant canopy. Um, it didn't have the standard kind of box and frame canopy of, of the other measurements. Um, so let's have a look inside the cockpit. Now, <laughs> unlike the uh, Fockwolf FW190, um, this wasn't really kind of well designed and it, it even kind of states in in the manual in the documentation that um this was put together more by engineers and they just kind of put things where they where they could fit them rather than unlike the fw190 putting uh, things where they were easy to reach so what we're going to do is that we're going to have a look around the, the cockpit now just identify some of the switches and some of the gauges some of the important things we'll get this thing started up uh, we'll taxi out and see if we can take off without killing ourselves which is um something that's quite difficult to do to be honest and there's a trick to it which we'll get at, get to while we're uh, while we're on the way to the runway so anyway, starting uh, from the left side, and we'll work our way over to the right. So these big wheels here, you've got two of them. This one here is for um, the flaps, I believe it is. The outside one is, yep, it's flaps. And the inside one here is for um, the trim. So I've got this set onto a button on my HOTAS. So if I trim four day, you see that the inside wheel moves. And uh, if I click my flaps, which I've got set to my HOTAS as well, um, in fact, that's not moving. That's, ah, there we go. I've got it set on that one. So there you go. You can see that uh, that's the flaps wheel moving there. Now, with the trim, uh, you've got this little um, gauge here, which shows you um, trim. So that's one, zero, and that goes up to minus six, but only up to um, plus two. Um, now, with the flaps, um, so you've got the, the flaps um, handle here. Now, on the flaps itself, if we look out here, as I start lowering the flaps, they'll start lowering down. There's no gauge in the cockpit to tell you whereabouts your flaps are. You have to actually check the flaps, and as they come down there, you can see just on the, the uh, leading edge of the flap there that there's indicators saying like 5, 10, 20, showing the, the degrees of flaps that you have down there. So that's how the flaps work. So I'll just uh, crank those all the way back up. It takes a little bit of time. And you have to take that into account when you're uh, when you're flying as well. That uh, actually getting your flaps down before you come in for a landing is quite a long process. Now, over on this side, this is your engine management uh, controls. Uh, this is the throttle here with a, a radio push to talk button on. And if we just look here, uh, this little switch is a um, this one that's rocking there. Uh, that's uh, for propeller management uh, controls, and that. On this gauge here, this little clock gauge, it shows you uh, the propeller pitch. So using that, you can um, change the propeller's pitch, and therefore it's uh, RPM against uh, the boost pressure that you're putting through the engine. Now, this uh, yellow or orange handle here is for the fuel pumps. Now, the Measuresmith only has one fuel tank. It's an L-shaped fuel tank that sits uh, just below and behind the, um, the cockpit. 
And what this does is that it turns on pump one, pump two, and both pumps. And there's a pump at the bottom of the tank and a pump at the top of the tank or the back of the tank. So that when the aircraft is um, in certain maneuvers, pulling certain amounts of G, then both pumps can get fuel. So that's how can, that kind of works. Now, there's a tiny little switch here, uh, as you can see where my... Um, where my mouse is that's a very very important switch and that's the automatic governor for the uh, propeller rpm so if you switch that into manual it might not work now um, yeah while the aircraft's not powered but in manual um, you manually control the pitch of the propellers when you put it into automatic um, the the governor automatically governs the engine for you and does everything that it that it needs to so uh, generally, you'll always leave that in automatic unless something's gone wrong. Uh, I really wouldn't recommend doing it um, doing it manually. And then this little handle back here is for the engine stop. So uh, that one you just pull up to kill the engine. Now, two gauges that we have here as well, two very, very important gauges. Um, this one here is the tailwheel lock. So that's in the lock position, that's the unlock position. Now, you must, I can't stress this enough, you must lock the tailwheel when you're, you're taxiing straight. Because um, this aircraft, it's a real pig on the ground. It, it just wants to kind of go everywhere. And there's so much torque coming through the propeller, and the tail section's so small, uh, that you get very little rudder input when you're on the ground. So you have to use the brakes to steer. And if you if you lose attention or if you stop paying attention or even for a second, then the aircraft will, will be kind of rocking and rolling. And uh, because the undercarriage is very narrow, it, it's uh, there's a very high chance that it'll roll you over or roll you onto a wing and, and damage the aircraft. So I can't stress that enough that you must lock the tailwheel when you want to be taxiing straight. And this one here is another, another very, very important uh, switch. And this is for the water methanol or fuel switch. So there's another tank behind the cockpit, um, I guess around here, that contains um, either water methanol or fuel, and you can select what you want to put in there. Now, if you've got water methanol in there, that needs to be set to, to that position. If you've got fuel in there, then you turn that to the downward position. Now, the reason that you don't want to get that mixed up is that if you've got water methanol in there and uh, you turn it on uh, when it's set to fuel, then you can start pouring water into the fuel tanks, which is not very good. But if you've got that set to, if you've got fuel in the tank and you've got that set to water methanol, when you turn that tank on, you're going to start pumping fuel in, uh, into the supercharger and into the engine, which can cause a, a catastrophic failure or explosion. So again, really wouldn't recommend that. So you need to make very uh, sure that that switch is in the right position, whether it's water methanol or fuel. Uh, coming around here, you've got the emergency uh, can canopy jettison. So you pull that, then the canopy flies off when you're ready to uh, bail out the aircraft if something goes wrong. You've got the starter switch underneath this little handle here. So once you've cranked up the engine, then you pull that out and then the engine starts. You've got the undercarriage up and down handles here. You've got like a little alternator here. Once you've uh, kind of turned on the electrics, that thing starts rattling away, which is quite cool. Got magneto switches here, which you normally set to both. Again, you've got your standard uh, gauges here. This is the water methanol um, pressure gauge. So it, uh, once the water methanol engages, then that needle will shoot up to about the top needle there or thereabouts, uh, saying that the, there's water methanol being injected into the, the supercharger or into the engine. You've got a speed gauge and kilometer, artificial horizon, uh, rise and descent indicator. Uh, you've got your fuel pressure gauge and oil pressure gauge you've got oil temperature and coolant temperature um, that's your rotor or propeller rpm you've got your boost gauge showing how much boost you're pushing through the engine now normally you wouldn't want to push this any more than 1.35 to 1.4 um, under exceptional circumstances you can push it up to 1.6 with the water methanol boost uh, but you can't use that for extended periods of time otherwise you can break the engine Again, you've got the uh, rotor RPM gauge here, fuel tank gauge, um, gyro compass, and altimeter, as well as a, a stopwatch behind the, um, the gun sight reticle here. Now, this tube uh, sitting out here with this handle is a flare gun. 
So if you need to identify yourself or if you need to send a signal to wingmen, then you've got a flare gun there, which is uh, quite handy. These tubes that you see here with the handle on top are a UV lamp uh, illuminators, so you can light up the cockpit at night so you can see what you're doing, which is handy. And then down here, you've got the circuit breaker controls, same as the FW190. You've got radiator control handles, um, and then your oxygen supply controls. And this little tube here is quite funky. If you're carrying a um, underwing fuel tank, then you can see fuel flowing through this, uh, saying that there's fuel coming from that underslung fuel tank. And then once that goes empty, that means that it's no longer drawing fuel, so you can release the tank, which is really handy. And then you've got your IFF and radio sets and everything like that down here, which is also quite cool. Oh, and then lastly, you've got your bomb armament uh, systems here. Uh, so what we're going to do is that we'll go through the startup sequence. We'll get this thing uh, cranked up and then we'll see if we can't uh, taxi out and take off. So the first thing that we need to do is turn on the circuit breakers. Uh, and We'll just turn those on all here. And then as you can see, all the little lights and gauges start moving. And then the little alternator down there starts rattling away, which uh, I find is quite funky. I like that. And then we've got the aircraft lights on there. If you don't want them off, I believe it's uh, that switch there switches them off. So, yeah, there we go. We'll turn those off. Uh, the next step to do is just move the throttle forward slightly and then pull it back to move the, um, the pumps into both. Turn the magnetos up into um, both. Prepare the, the starter handle. Now, in the manual, um, it states that you should um, get the engine cranked, pull the, the starter, and then start priming as the engine's cranking. Um, but because you don't have two mice or you don't have two hands in game, um, what's a good thing to do is as they're cranking the engine is to start priming then to bring this needle up into between these two arrows here. And then once the, the engine's been cranked enough or it's at its peak spin, I guess, then you pull out the starter and then hopefully the engine will fire. So that's what we're going to do now. So to do that, we'll contact the ground crew and then we ask them on F4 there to run inertial starter. So we'll press that. Copy. And then we should start hearing a kind of a whirring noise. And while that's going on, we'll just start pulling up the, the fuel pump here. So as you can hear that whirring noise now is them pulling up the um, the crank. So there you go, that should be enough fuel in there. So that's the crank at the top, so then we'll pull the starter. And then hopefully the engine will fire. As it has, absolutely fantastic. So that's the engine now started. So we'll close up the canopy here. I'm going to put the gun sight away just by clicking on it there so that we can see a little bit further forward. Now, this is a, a good tip for taxiing. Uh, what you want to do is pull the stick back and off to the right. Now, you pull the stick back in order to keep the tail on the ground so that you don't uh, lift and have any accidents. And you pull it off to the right to counter the, the gyroscopic effects of, of the propeller turning. If you keep it centered, you'll find that the aircraft keeps wanting to, to roll or you're off to the left. So I'll just make sure that the tail wheel is, is uh, locked there, which it is. So as we start uh, throttling up here to start our taxi, the aircraft should hopefully go straight ahead, which it is fantastic. And what we'll do is that I'll just unlock the tail wheel there and then start tapping the tow brakes there in order to turn us onto the taxiway. Again, just taking it very, very gentle, just kind of being very careful as to um, not to throw ourselves off the taxiway. Now, one thing I did forget to do as well is put the radiators into open. Uh, should have done that well, I, what I did the circuit breakers. Uh, but in, when it's in the topmost position, it's in automatic there anyway, so it, it's, it's fairly safe. It's not going to overheat when it's in automatic. So again, just taxiing out here. Now, one thing with the, the 109 is that the forward visibility is absolutely shocking. It really is terrible. So the prop it's in manual air, so I'll just switch that back into automatic. And as you can see, uh, the prop pitch will there take care of itself as, as I start um, pushing in power. 
So again, a, a good tip with this as well in order to kind of continue taxiing straight is to give it a quick burst of power to get you moving and then throttle straight back down to zero and then coast. If you try taxiing with the power permanently on, then the aircraft will be permanently wanting to um, to yaw off to the left, which is um, which is a real pain in the ass. So again, just um, taxiing or turning here using the, the brakes with the um, tail wheel lock off. I've got it onto a button on my Hotas because when you're on the ground, you um, you turn it on and off constantly, which is a real pain in the bum. So as I'm coming up to the thing here, I'll just unlock the tail wheel and then use my brakes in order to turn onto the runway. So I'm quite thankful we managed to get this far without killing ourselves. So I'll just lock up the tail wheel here. Oops. And then just uh, line ourselves up with the runway here just using slight brake inputs and then we'll bring ourselves to a halt here now this is where it starts getting very very interesting which is the, the takeoff roll um, now one thing you can't do when you take off is pull back on the stick if you pull back on the stick you're gonna die <laughs> you really are. You, you can't do it. Um, now, what you have to do, and this is an absolute must do, if you don't do this, then you're going to be in an absolute freaking world of trouble. So I'm actually going to uh, put my radiator into automatic there because the engine start to cool down below 30 degrees, which can damage the engine when you uh, when you power up here. So actually move that into close just to let the engine warm up a little bit. Um, but what you have to do is... As you're rolling out, have the, the stick over to the right and back slightly. And then as you start getting up towards um, 50 kilometers an hour, towards 100 kilometers an hour, still have it off to the right, but start pushing the stick forward. And then you'll find that the aircraft will, will gradually start lifting off the ground, and then you can start centering the stick. And just keep an eye on your roll with with the left and right. But it's essential that you ha that you start pushing forward on the stick. If you don't do that, the aircraft will roll over and it'll die, and it won't will be very very messy. So again, just doing my uh, pre takeoff checks here, making sure that the um, prop pitch is in automatic, which it is. I've got the radiators in automatic, so they'll take care of themselves as I'm pulling off there as well. Uh, everything else is looking A-OK. -okay. I don't need flaps, although you can use flaps to take off if, if you want to, um, but personally I found it's not really required. Now, with all of these videos I do, it is just all based off my own experience. Um, you know, I may do things wrong, I may do things right, I don't know. I just do what works for me. And then as soon as we get off the ground, then we'll hit the undercarriage up button, which is there. So I'm going to start off my roll now using uh, about half right rudder keeping the stick off to the right and back a bit and then as we start gaining speed I'll push the stick forward still off to the right and then start centering it as we gain speed and hopefully we'll get airborne without killing ourselves so here we go so again just gradually putting in power here and I'm going to move it up to about 2500 rpm again using the um ah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Not the best takeoff, but again, yee, a slight bounce there. Yeah, like I said, um, <laughs> not the best, but we're, we're airborne. Didn't damage the aircraft uh, too much there. I think we're in good shape. I'm just going to go external here. In fact, we've got a red light there, which means that the undercarriage is up. So just have a look there, and we're looking like we're in pretty good shape, actually. So a, a slight little scrape there, but um, I had the stick fully off to the right. I was full right rudder, but again, uh, if you get a bit enthusiastic with that throttle, then she will roll off to the off to the left, which is a real pain in the bum. So now that we're airborne, kind of successfully, um, although I think if that was real life, uh, I think that one might have bent something there. Um, so let's have a look at the aircraft performance. So again, just keeping the uh, RPM here at about um, 2,500 thereabouts, um, which not really stressing the aircraft at all. The uh, governor's um, automatically adjusting the the um, propeller pitch there, as we can see, that's uh, turning as it should be. 
Uh, radiators are doing nothing, keeping the temperature at about uh, 90 degrees there. And if we look external, then you can see that they're marginally open, so that's all fantastic. And then we'll just uh, make a slight right turn here. Now, when flying this aircraft, what I found is that you need to be incredibly gentle with the controls. It doesn't respond to being thrown around too well, especially at low speeds. If you're above 450 to 500, then you'll find that the aircraft um, it responds quite well actually to being thrown about. But if you're below 400 and you start doing tight turns, it will protest and it will snap roll and it will start becoming quite unpredictable. But even though it is unpredictable, the aircraft is quite easily recoverable. So I'm at about 420 here, so what I'll do is just stick it on its wing and then I'll just gradually start pulling in back pressure here. And then as you can see, the aircraft departs in a very, very strange way. So I'm just recovering that there now, kind of. <laughs> Yeah, when she's at low speed, definitely below kind of 400, she becomes a bit of a handful. So I'm just going to push in a bit more power here just to speed up, and then we'll do that again. So there we go, about 450, so I'll roll her off to the side, and then I'm just starting to gradually pull in back pressure on the stick here. You start getting a buffeting, which is when you're at the limits of the, um, of the stall, and then if you just keep pushing in back pressure, pulling back pressure, just a little bit more. As you can see, she starts departing in, in very strange ways. The, the nose kind of goes upwards, which seems very strange to me. But, um, ooh, hello. Trying to come out of that turn there, and then she's immediately kind of snap rolling on me. But I've got a hold of that, okay. So, looking good. Now, another thing as well, if you try doing a loop with this, any sort of uh, nose up, um, kind of attitude that has a negative effect on how the aircraft performs as well here so I'm in a slight dive here um, getting up to about 500 kilometers an hour again not pushing the engine too hard and I'm just gonna pull back on the stick not too hard it's a nice gentle input as you can see the slats are coming out there on the wings and as we come over the top here and the air airspeed starting to drop off the aircraft does start getting a little flaky but um, I'd say that's quite a tidy loop there. I'm quite proud of that. And then we'll do a barrel roll. Again, it doesn't have the fastest roll rate. Um, it's definitely not as fast as the FW190 or possibly even the P51. And that's a full deflection roll there. So if I push this stick far off to the left, does seem a little sluggish in the rolls, but um, it is quite an easy aircraft to control when it's in the air. On the ground, that's a completely different matter. So, we'll just line up here. And then what we'll do is that we'll have a look at the uh, MW50 water methanol injection system. So, again, we've got the switch here set to water methanol, because we know I've got water methanol in the rear tank. To turn on the water, meth water methanol system, we turn on that top switch there, so that's the system on, but it's not feeding the engine yet. Um, the water methanol won't be injected into the engine until I go to full throttle. And then you'll notice uh, that it starts injecting because the pressure needle there will jump, and then the, en <laughs> the engine will surge as well. It, it increases power from... Oh, I need to get this right now, don't I? Um, I'm, trying to go, I'm trying to think what it is. I think it's 16... 100 up to 1800 if I remember that right. Um, I don't have the manual in front of me here at the moment so I'm not entirely sure but I know it's a, it's a really big increase, it's a big jump. So we're steady here at about just well, 480, uh, 480 kilometers an hour so I'll just push the throttle forward. As you can see the needle goes up there which means that the water methanol is injected. Again, I'm just uh, trying to keep the aircraft flying as straight as possible here, but um, because of the extra power going through the engine, she naturally wants to climb as she's building up speed. And as you can see there, the, the she's gone up to, what, 550? And still climbing. Just uh, turn off the reticle there. There is a little switch here, uh, which you can turn forwards and backwards. 
which increases and decreases the, the dimness on the um, on the reticle and also there is a, um, a, a dimmer there so if you're pointing up into the, the sun and it, it doesn't uh, bleach out the um, if I could really turn it off there oops, meh. <laughs> so many buttons to click so we can make that go away there we go so there you go it can start bleaching out the um, the reticle if you're in the sun so that just kind of helps with that But yeah, that's us now at full power with water methanol engaged. Um, and you can fly around like this for uh, some time. Uh, I think it's about 10 minutes. Um, and then you need to turn it off and kind of uh, let the engine recover. And then you can go again. Now, the fuel tank in the rear, the water methanol tank, it's a 118 litre tank, but it's only ever loaded with 75 litres of water methanol. So there's an interesting fact for you. So again, just in a slight dive here, you'll find out the aircraft um, does pick up speed quite happily. That's us uh, straight up to 600 kilometers an hour. And the engines, uh, or the governor's kind of controlling the, the prop pitch there so that it doesn't over the engine. So I'll do is that we'll uh, just reduce the, the power down there so that's just knocking it out of full. And as you can see, the water methanol is kind of dropped off there and then the air speed starts reducing. Now one thing you will find as you apply power, the aircraft wants to roll to right quite readily, so you do need to fly with uh, quite a lot of um, left aerolon input on the stick. Now it has elevator trim, which is on this wheel here, which pretty much you fly all the time with uh, it trimmed all the way forward. Uh, but it doesn't have uh, aerolon or um, rudder trim so you know when it comes to keeping the thing flying straight then you're pretty much always kind of using the stick so we'll just turn around here now another thing that the flare gun as I said on the ground if we just uh, click that to pull the trigger as you can see it fires off a green flare there and then the, the gun even reloads itself. You see the little flare cartridge come flying out and it puts a new flare cartridge in, which is quite cool. So that's a, a green identification flare there, or, which is uh, quite cool. <coughs> Ooh, hello. Getting a, a bit too vigorous on the, uh, on the turnaround there. And again, you know, any sort of uh, heavy pressure on a stick in the aircraft will snap roll on you. So what we'll do now is that we'll uh, just have a quick look at the weapon systems. So it has two machine guns on the top of the nose in the engine cowlings here and it has a cannon in the actual nose spinner. Now to turn on the weapons uh, you've got this switch here which is the weapon master switch so that's now the weapons on and ready to fire. And then all you need to do is line up on a target. Um, you've got a separate trigger uh, for the machine guns and the cannon but before you can fire them as well you need to turn on the um i've got one a button there you go uh, so you've got like a safety switch so you need to turn the safety switch on before you can fire the guns and turn on the master mode switch there and then that's the the guns then ready to fire so i've got some um <coughs> trucks on a target range over here so we'll fly over that way and we'll give them a, a quick squirt and see if we can't uh, can't hit something so again, just powering back here to make sure that I don't um, over the engine in the dive. And then just lining up ready for a pass on the right hand column here. Just a little bit of slowdown there, which is a pain, but... Give them all a, a little bit of a squirt. And I managed to kill them. <laughs> Uh, I was hoping for a few more than that, but, you know, a kill is a kill. Why not? But that's that's the, the, the gun system there, anyway. So we'll uh, just turn the gun system off, then put the safety back on. <coughs> now what we'll do is that we'll uh, go and see if we can't um, land this thing. Now, landing is another thing that's incredibly difficult in this aircraft, and it's something... 
I've kind of struggled to do myself. Um, I've had several very successful crash landings. But I've yet to actually kind of physically put this thing on the ground safely. So what I'll do is that we'll just uh, come back on the power here. And then we'll let the uh, airspeed drop off. Now we start putting the flaps down at about 350 to 300 kilometers an hour. And then gear down at around 250 I believe it is. Um, if I remember that rightly. I may not do, but hey ho. But um, one thing you will find with this aircraft as well is that it doesn't bleed speed very well. So here I am, I've, I've got the throttle pretty much idle. And she's still doing near enough 400 kilometers an hour straight level. Which isn't very good. So again, she's starting to come down there, so I'm just going to start um, putting the uh, flaps down. Now, as you can see, as you start putting the flaps down, you, you get an alarm or a horn saying, you know, you're putting the flaps down here without your undercarriage down. I don't know how to turn off that horn. I really don't wish I knew. But there we go. So, oops, in fact, I'm starting to slow down an awful lot here, so I need to start putting in a bit more power before we uh, stall and fall out the sky and die like that. Uh, there we go. So there we go. I'm going to put the undercarriage down now anyway, and then we'll continue cranking down these flaps, which is a, a real chore. So we go. That's about 25 degrees of flaps, I think it is, or about full flaps. <clears throat> now the approach speed is about 250 knots, and you want to be at 180 knots over the threshold, ready to flare and land. If you're going faster than that, then the aircraft will refuse to land, and then you'll stall and die. So again, just um, trying to line up on the runway here um, I want to come in slightly low to be honest rather than slightly high so that I know that I'm not going to um, be too fast so that looks about right to me so just kind of landing here trying to bring my speed down I've still got the throttle absolutely idle here as you can see there's uh, no boost going through the engine at all Make sure that the flaps are fully down, they certainly are. And then just bring this down, still above 200 kilometers an hour, but um, as we get over the threshold, I'll start leveling off. And then uh, I hope, in fact, one thing I will do as well, um, the temperature's okay there. And I hope this comes down okay because my landings really haven't been that successful recently. Oops, slight pause there. So again, at this low speed, she gets quite wallowy. The nose floats quite a lot, so kind of working the, the stick here quite a bit in order to try and keep a level. Idling off the throttle here, just kind of trying to control my descent because I don't want to come down too hard. Ooh, come on, get your nose down, get your nose down. Oh dear, slight scrapey, scrapey, scrapey. <laughs> and the other way. Mm. So again, <laughs> I'm kind of down successfully there, um, kind of, but um, yeah, a little bit of scraping of the wingtips again there, but um, I'm going to count that as being kind of a success. <laughs> so again, we'll just uh, taxi on in here. Again, I've turned on the, uh, the tailwheel lock here so we can kind of taxi straight and cranking up the flaps, which does take forever as well. Oh, so that's the flaps up. And that's us kind of taxiing in. Again, can't really see anything forward at all. The, the forward visibility on this aircraft on the ground is shocking. And because it doesn't have that movable tailwheel, it is very hard to kind of serpentine when you're, you're taxiing as well. So we'll uh, just uh, take this little taxiway here. Oh, 
Oops. Hey, come on. So I'm at full right wheel brake there. Which is just quite slow to respond. Like I said, it is a, a real pig on the ground. And turn on the... Uh, Turn on a wheel, uh, tail wheel lock there so that we can kind of taxi straight. And I think we'll leave this here. So to kill the engine, uh, you pull off the engine kill switch there. And then hit the electric kill switch in order to switch everything off. Then you can open up the canopy. And then we'll get out and... Have a look. Oops. I'm starting to get all jerky jerky again. I'm sure that's something going on in the background on my computer. But there we go. That's the um, Measuresmith BF 109K4. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, I'll certainly be bringing uh, more of this aircraft. I'll um, try doing some air combat and some other things like that in the near future. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. This has been Smudge saying thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.